Bible says the message of the cross is foolishness. Foolishness. Well, guys, what is going on? This is Brian Sumner with the Foolishness Podcast. I know there's so much going on in life. There's so many going through fights right now. There's so many severe things. I want to thank you for tuning in, listening to me with my funny accent, and sharing these videos, and the downloads are going up there. I don't care about that. wasn't the goal, but the goal is to have many people hear about our Lord and Savior, Jesus. So talking about fighting, it is a blessing today to have my good brother in the Lord, Benil Dariush. What is going on? Hey, my brother. How are you? Do you have a black eye right now or no? I don't think so. I don't know if my, maybe my wife hit me, but yeah, besides, well, that's, ma- that's marriage for you. So yeah, I, I've been, uh, I've been going a little bit lighter than usual. Not too okay. much lighter. Training's been pretty good still. I just remember that last time you were on, which I think was like our fourth or fifth episode, like 90 episodes ago, you were the only um, guest with a black eye. So you had a black eye last week, but not today. I remember seeing that online somewhere. Yeah, so. I think scratch, just a scratch, you know, um, if you got me, if you caught me two weeks ago uh, or no, how, how long ago, maybe like 10 days ago. Yeah, it was. I was pretty busted up. I, it's got. I think it's the MMA gloves, uh, the UFC gloves, because when Four I train, yeah. yeah, it's not. It, it's the leather on them, and just my face gets really scratched up and busted up real <laughs> quick. I didn't even feel that bad in the fight. I felt really good. But guys, Benny's been a friend of mine for a few years now, at least. He was on one of our first episodes, like I said. But Benny is a professional fighter. Um, MMA fighter, obviously doesn't come from America like I don't, lives here now, but has had this successful career in jiu-jitsu, um, MMA, UFC, and we have to say this for any new listeners, but, but what does that mean, Benny? What What is UFC, which which the casuals would say, or MMA, to, to the grandma that's listening, why does Benny possibly have a black eye? <laughs> so... MMA is martial arts, all of the martial arts combined into one. You get to pick what martial arts you like, and you get to bring them to the table and say, these are the best if you put them together, and Mm. this is how you should fight. And then you make your case by fighting and proving it. So, Mm. you know, I specialize in uh, grappling and striking. My grappling, uh, most people would say, is jiu-jitsu, but I do a lot of wrestling as well. And then uh, as far as striking goes, I, I do a lot, a lot of kickboxing with uh, my coach, Rafael Cordero. So mm. I, I bring those two things to the table. And, mm. and I think that's the best combination. You have different people with different set of skills. And we get inside that octagon to prove who has the best skills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ben Neal isn't just going uh, down the street, finding people to try his martial arts on. Um, he's entering an arena with a bunch of other professional athletes. They get paid for a living. And um, this man's able to provide for his wife, his family. You go back. We talked about this last time. I mean, Bruce Lee was really one of the, the pioneers of, of MMA, though he wasn't in a lot of fights. You see him adapting all these styles. Even Chuck Norris back then was around the Gracies. And Benny had a successful jiu-jitsu career fighting, you know, the best in the world. Um, and now um, is part of the famous... You said Rafael Cordera, King's MMA gym. You have your own gym there in it's Anaheim, right? Yeah, my gym still, is in Anaheim. Yeah, I've still lagged. I still haven't got over there and got beaten up by you. But, uh, <laughs> but, but for those listening, this is absolutely, you could say for me almost, my vice, my go-to. When I came to America, we talked about it a bit last time, when my friends started getting stoned, partying, drinking, you know, whatever, my vice was go to Blockbuster and get Sour Patch Kids and watch UFC. So, you know, from Hoist Gracie to Don Fry through the pride days of Crow Cop and the rest to today, I don't miss a fight. I've known Dana for years. I did jujitsu last night, obviously with your good friend, my professor, Magno Almeida. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, what a guy. Magno is a great guy. So great coach. And like you said, man, it wasn't Jiu-jitsu isn't one of those things where only certain people can do it. Jiu-jitsu mm. is like, uh, one of the things about jiu-jitsu right now is it's for everybody. It's excellent self-defense. It's ex- uh, it's excellent exercise. And it mm. just, in a way, it helps you meditate. A lot of people have a lot of uh, 
a lot of stress and, you know, you work eight hours a day and, and, and you, you feel so uh, wound up and people go to jujitsu and they, they, you know, try yeah. to either get beat up or beat somebody up and they feel much better about themselves. And obviously the rules of jujitsu really help not get hurt. They, yeah. they have really rules and, and I think that helps a lot. You know, you can come, you can grapple with four or five different people in one day and, mm. and, you know, near submissions, you, you tap and it's over. You, you people don't realize how good of a, it's amazing, uh, you know, therapy it is. Well, it's called, I mean, art suave, like the smooth art. So the idea for those listening, and I know we're going on a little bit more for the MMA or jujitsu fans who know this, but really coming from Japan down to the Gracie family, Helio Gracio was way smaller than his brother, Carlos. So he had watched the techniques in the gym and then as he would adapt these techniques, being a smaller guy, how do you defend yourself in the street? And so even Kelly Slater made the point, who is the greatest to me, obviously professional surfer, but one of the greatest athletes ever. I mean, he, he's, he's a unicorn. And he said the first sport you should put your kids in is jujitsu. Why? You haven't got to punch someone. You haven't got to headbutt someone or eye gouge. You're going to control them, hold them down. And, you know, I think I might have a couple of, you know, little bruises on the arm from last night, but but you're working out, you're with friends. I roll with four or five guys last night, and, and it's not violent. Obviously, when you go in the ring, it's two professional athletes, almost like um, professional football or professional boxing. You're aiming to score points, get the takedowns, do the rest. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I think people forget violence isn't just, just fighting. It doesn't... It, necessarily mean violence if mm. two people stand up for a fight then their intentions you know it all depends on their intentions too violence a lot of times we, we, we need to understand it's when we oppress somebody mm. we you know we attack somebody when they're not ready for it but when two people say hey we're going to jump in here and see who's best that's not really violence that's a competition mm -hmm. and i believe fighting is the ultimate form of competition because let's say you can put a ball through a hoop you can kick a ball really far i, I don't know whatever your sport may be but ultimately mm -hmm. you say hey i can beat you up that's the ultimate <laughs> form of competition and um, if you if you take it you know it, it can't be violence don't get me wrong it can't be but it's, yeah. uh, it's more about your intentions and i think um that's clear too especially with what uh our lord says you know yeah or Engines are the most important thing. Mm. And it's true, you know, boxing, they said four people die a year because of me and Benny are boxing and we have these gloves on and we're, we're powerful. He's knocking me down three times a fight. My brain's rattling. It's crazy. In the UFC, once you catch someone, they're down. The fight stopped because the idea is in the street, it would be done. And, and my perspective on this is, and this is as an evangelist, you know, I know we're going to jump into your faith, your story. I mean, even Ben Corson's hit me up a minute ago. Love you guys, because I know you help him with a bunch of his workouts. But the idea for me is, OK, then let's be critical of all this. How do we get into that realm and reach all those people? You know what I mean? For me, it was very real. And I'm saying this to set you up. I was a professional skater. I remember being on the cover of a magazine and on the cover of a magazine it said, Brian, some of you know, it was an interview. And the next article was Chuck Liddell UFC because I'd met Dane at a bunch of places. He'd flown me out to Vegas. I'd stay with him for three days, just me and him driving around. And that was right when I was coming to faith. I got to sit with Dane and his family at the time, Cher. I got to witness to Jason Lambert at a UFC event. He came to faith. I got to share with a lot of those guys. So I looked at this avenue as how do I stay involved in this? And then when I started doing jujitsu, as Benil just said, um, my professor Magno at church said, Brian, you skated for years. You got to get on the mat. You got to go do something that gets it out of your system. You're sitting with couples who are struggling, kids who are suicidal. I carry that. And it became like a new focus for me. But that's allowed me to be a witness in the jujitsu world and connect with a lot of these fighters as well. So, yeah, I'm just saying, how do you then... How, do, how does a Christian bring it into Benny's world? A lot of those fighters from Brazil, especially, say they have a relationship with God. A lot of people who hate God. There's guys like you in it to be a light. So I, I think uh, we're creatures of worship, right? Yeah. And uh, if we don't have 
the right God to worship, we're going to find a false idol. Hmm. And what happens in MMA is you, you find all these guys who are really good at fighting and people assume they're, these, they're perfect just because they're good at fighting guys or, or, or girls doesn't matter what we look at them and we start to idolize them. Yeah. As a Christian, I recognize that my talents come from God. And as a Christian, my goal is to take those talents, uh, multiply them and be like, Lord, thank you for this here, here back. I thank you for, you know, so I want to glorify him with my talents. And in doing that, I hope people look at me and say, okay, so he's not the, he's not the object. He's not mm-hmm. the main point. Yeah. He's, he's just, part of something bigger and he's pointing that's that's what the whole purpose of my career is mm. just to point to my lord and savior jesus so that's that's kind of how i i look at it and um i think that's how you can bring more people um to the lord uh, through mm-hmm. mma you know i'm i'm not um i'm not great at evangelizing in terms of speaking but i um uh, I think if you if you walk well, uh, people will recognize you walk and they'll ask why mm. you're able to go well. So I, I try to just, you know, have a better walk. Obviously, I'm not a perfect man. I <laughs> I, I, I have a lot of problems. So uh, I, I'm, I'm trying my best is I guess what I'm saying. Well, Benny, I'll, I'll challenge you on that because I'll say I know you don't you know, we never want to toot our own horn, that old English saying. But the way I really met you or heard about you was I was going to speak at an FCA, which is a fellowship of Christian athletes. And as I go up to the door to enter the gym, there was a poster outside that said, you know, and it was just one of those printed ones on campus, the way they should be doing it. Professional UFC MMA fighter, Benil Darius, you know, speaking tomorrow. And I was like, who's this guy? Like I'd heard the name, but I don't even know if you'd been in the UFC yet, you know? And then I ran into you guys at Whole Foods and one of your students is like, Brian, Weren't you in that movie? Like I was in this movie, Hard Flip, you know, escape movie that reached a lot of people, Christian thing. But then we connected. So I'm saying my introduction to you was you were sharing your faith in a gym with all these students. Then you came and spoke with a couple of things I was doing. And I know when you're done with your fights and you're sharing about the Lord, that's reaching a lot of people because people do look to these athletes and say, what drives them? So we're to be, you know, lifting him up in word and deed. So you're doing that. But then, I mean, more specifically, you just came off fighting Diego for the second time, what, two or three weeks ago, um, crazy fight. You'd beat him in the past. You're, you're now living this out. So do you want to jump into your career a bit where you are, or do you even want to help people see? We can jump into the fight. You know, it was 12 yeah. days ago, I think. It, yep. it, want, I'm, a, I'm in a really weird spot in my career as far as uh, fighting goes because I'm, I'm what you would say. Most people would, I don't know if I am, but most people tell me I'm in my prime right now. I think I still have uh, more to learn and, and get better. Yeah. But I'm, I'm in my prime right now and uh, I'm knocking at the door of the higher level guys. I'm asking for the top five and yeah. looking for the championship belt. But the problem I have is they're not interested because I'm high risk and low reward. Mm. And that's the reason why I had a rematch with Diego. Yep. Since about six years ago, Diego also did really well. And uh, he continued on a really good run. And he got ahead of me in the rankings. So the fight made sense in terms of rankings. But yeah. uh, in some ways, it didn't either. Because we had already fought. I had won. So I, I thought we would do this fight closer to the to the belt or even for the belt. But yeah, that's, uh, that's not how they felt about it. Yep. Yeah, that, because they couldn't find me another opponent, higher rank. They asked me to fight Diego. I said yes. Obviously, he wants to um, he wants to redeem himself from the loss he had. So he took the fight as well. And then we had another one. And this time, the fight was a lot closer. It was a lot more exciting. Uh, mm. And I mean, it, it was a great opportunity for me. I was so grateful to to be able to fight someone who who improved so much mm. and pushed me so far. So in a lot of ways, I improved in this fight. And that's just going to make it worse for the guys who are already bored. <laughs> you fight now, like your best chances are to fight me now because I'm only getting better. 
Yeah, and in all fairness, I mean, you look at the sport of MMA, and Dana, to me, has always been a fan of who's the best guy, put the best guy in there. But now you've got the UFC, what? It was sold for $4 billion. I mean, it's thriving. It's one of the biggest things in the world. But like what Benny's saying, you guys, if you're a top five guy, you want to fight a headline guy to get as many pay-per-views, as many eyes on you, the pay-per-view points or the big days. But if I'm one of these guys who's trying to run it, and I'm about to fight this guy, Benil, who's got his faith, who has given some people some crazy fights. What have you on a six, six fight win streak right now? If yeah, you so go and stand in front of them and bang the way you do, which you're going to listen to your coach next time, right? You're meant to go in with the jab. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We're still working on game planning. I, it seems uh, I'm, a, I'm more emotional than I look. I, 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 well, Benny wife- gets hit and he comes forward, you guys, if you've seen him fight, but it, it, it's... But if I'm a guy that's going to fight you, I'm thinking, man, I mean, obviously I'm 230, so sadly I'd be fighting the, the Crow Cops back in the day and the guys that would take my head off. But to the realm of UFC and MMA, you are right there on the cusp of you've beaten enough people, you've got the talent, you definitely got the team, you are a fight away like Charles Oliveira where he is right now. Like even for Ally Aquinta when he got those fights back then and it opened him up and suddenly he's fighting Khabib. You were right there to step in and fight, you know, Gaethje, Ferguson. I mean, Dan Hooker would be an amazing fight. Um, Michael Chandler just came off that left KO, you know, backflipping off the cage. Don't know how he didn't blow his knees out. And even obviously that's a fight or two away from, you know, Conor McGregor. And the thing is, you're so humble. You're like, okay, Lord, you're leading me this way. It's giving me this bigger platform more income, but these top five guys maybe don't want to take that fight. So so what's the tough position? How do you navigate this? Is this your manager? I did see Dana White said, man, Benil. I heard Benil, you know, talking gently about his frustration. And why not? I want to see what Benil's going to do with those guys. You know, I think it's okay to express your frustrations. I think it's a little bit different when you start calling people out and, and you start saying things about people because for example, yeah. it, it, expressing your frustrations is normal. People can, uh, can uh, relate to that and it, it's understandable. Yeah. But when you start calling people out, no one in this world owes anybody anything. Mm-hmm. We don't owe each other anything. No, you don't deserve anything. You, you <laughs> what you have is, is a gift. If you have something, it's a gift. It's yeah. a privilege. It's just not yours. Don't, don't act like it is. So with that being said, I never try to call people out specifically and like say, you have to fight me or this person has to fight me. I think, I think that's one of the reasons why I've never been big on the call outs. I, I, I don't feel, I don't feel it's the right thing to do. Um, just, because I don't, I don't think I, I, I deserve anything. I don't mm-hmm. think I, some people say, oh, but you earned it. You did this, you did that. But like, it's, it's, it's just, that's, I don't, I don't know. That's never been my mentality. Whatever they put in front of me, I'm going to take. And that's, the, I, I'm going to keep that mentality. I, mm-hmm. um, you know, ask for a top five opponent and I don't think I'm going to get one. And I, I thought I was, I even did an interview with the ESPN saying, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm uh I'm positive something good's gonna come. You know, top five is gonna yeah. come, but it's likely it. So, have they thrown names at you yet, or no? No, they. I've thrown names at them, and they've said no, no, and no. Be it, well, well, I don't have Dana's number anymore. I, I haven't seen it in about ten years. But if I had it, I would be sending up to. You have to get. Not that he's listening to me, but I'd say this is. You know, the Bible says a man's worthy of his wages. We don't go around calling anyone out. The past decade of all these fighters, I mean, even to the point where Connor was talking about, you know, Khabib's family and it was getting crazy. And then all these younger guys are like going after everyone to get the fights. What I liked about the prior fights was that Connor and Dustin came in and they were real respectful. And when you had those four guys on the stage, it kind of leveled the ground to like, okay, I guess we're doing this with respect now. You know, and Michael Chandler calling him not the baddest man on the planet, but the daddest man on the planet. It almost changed the perspective of now I'm not cussing Benil out to get a fight or saying this about this guy's girlfriend, the whole Jake Paul and him, him Ben Askren issue. But in saying that, I would say, let's be realistic, though. You go up against the Dan Hooker. How much far ahead is Dan Hooker? He just lost. He's a game fighter. 
he might look at you and say, I can get this guy on the way up. Like you said, fight me now. That's a great fight because couldn't the UFC put you there? You get that win. There it is. So Dan Hooker, he's ranked, I think, um, number eight. I'm number nine. And, you know, he's coming off of two losses and mm-hmm. I have six fight win streak. So I think it doesn't make sense in that terms. But if, if, if he's willing to fight in, in uh, April or May, I, I'd say let's go. You know, it's not an issue for me. But also, yeah. he just got out and he's got to go back home and they won't even let him back home because they need, he needs to quarantine for four weeks. So I think he'll probably just be getting back home right now. So more like July, June will be him if he could fight. Yeah, I'm going to have a daughter in June or yeah. maybe even earlier in may so with that being said i'm uh yeah you're I'm ready to gonna, go yeah I'm, I'm i'm i'll fight before but i won't fight when my daughter comes i'm gonna take a little break i'm gonna mm. i'm gonna spend some there you know so i i don't know what these guys want to do with me but i want uh i want to fight that's basically it i want to and i want to do it early i don't want to wait till um july or whatever i want to fight yeah. in may Who's available right now? I mean, Oliver is waiting for a title shot. Gaethje, he won't you, fight. Yeah. He won't fight. Oliver, yeah. basically, I, I mean, we've asked for him multiple times, and he said no. Um, mm. uh, Justin, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm close with Justin. He's a, he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. I would prefer not to have to do it unless it's for a title. I mean, yeah. it, this just doesn't make sense to me. There's other guys, too. I mean, Dustin and Connor are going to rematch because – they make the money, money fight yeah yeah um tony ferguson is somebody i would really like to fight i respect him a lot mm. it, it's um it, it's one of those things you know paul felder yeah uh, but he's ranked behind me now which, which is fine i fought people ranked behind me a lot actually it's not like they just have to be in front of me and paul's very well known people love him he's commentating is amazing he stands in front of you he's a, he's you know all these guys to me you just mentioned you know justin he was wild, interesting fight. I'm coming into the UFC. I might get tagged. I'm going to make money. And then he backed up and said, I'm going to wait. And he picked apart, was it Tony and a couple mm-hmm. of others? And I mean, he's, and that to me looks like your style. You're opening up right now when you get hit. But like I'm sure they're saying hi behind the jab. So, you know, this is one thing I got to say too. Um, I do open up and I do exchange a lot. But you, one thing I, um, I spoke with my coach about too, and I told him, look, um, I, I think a lot of people didn't notice it, but I, I landed a liver kick in the first round and I saw him hurt. Hmm. So I started to walk, walk him forward is because I knew he was hurt and his power was low. So I was yeah. just kind of walking punches and, and, and landing my shots and I could, I could feel him hurt. And then that's when the knee came in and I landed a knee and he went down a knee hmm. to the body went down obviously he survived and was able to recover which was really amazing on his part but mm-hmm. i i even though i it, the fight looks pretty risky i feel like i took the risks when i knew i had a higher mm-hmm. chance of serving all the dangers so to some yeah. degree it was wild but i think not as wild as my previous fights i've had some wilder stuff so the spinning back yeah, fists and then the, the left hook and then <laughs> yeah this even more yeah fight. Yeah, the spinning back fist fight with uh, Scott was actually a better fight. I, I controlled mm. the whole fight. Uh, again, good jabs, distance control, and then eventually just hurt him. And then I, I was able to capitalize on the finish with the spinning back fist, something mm-hmm. I don't do that much in fights anymore. And, <laughs> you know, the before and the fight before that is the one where people now think I'm crazy. The yeah. Car close. They, uh, everybody looks at that fight and they're like, oh, maybe Darvish is a little crazy because it, it, it got comeback of the year. You know, yeah. I started out, I was winning the first round, came back in the second round, and they thought I was really tired. So his corner was really pushing them uh, to come after me. He landed a couple of good shots thinking mm. I'm hurt. It, it didn't look good either on camera. I, I, I watch it and I know it doesn't look good, but he started backing me up towards the cage and, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, it clicked. I saw, I saw my opportunity, and I just, just went after went it. And, forward, uh, turn the and then I went on. forward. Yeah. So, and that's where the finish came from. So, lots of craziness, uh, lots of fun stuff. But I'm pretty excited right now for what's going to be next because yeah. this next fight 
it's going to tell a lot about the division. It's going to make a lot of, uh, it's going to decide a lot of things. Either I'm not going to move up much or yeah. I'm going to the number one contender spot. So yeah, we'll see. Well, that's what I would say in your honor. You know, you're going to go lay down next to your wife every night and she's going to be, babe, what, what, what's next for you? And it's not wrong to be like, hey, here's who I want to fight. Here's the work I've put in. You move up. If you could get any fight you want, just purely based on a fight, who would it be? If, if God's like, I'm going to tell one of those fighters to just take the Benil fight, who would it be right now? I mean, if, if I could fight anyone, I'd, I'd, I'd be like, okay, let's fight for the belt, whoever that is. I don't mm -hmm. care. Because right now the belt is uh, is uh, not occupied because uh, Habib retired. You yeah. know, be a cool fight. I would like to fight Habib for the belt. That mm -hmm. that would be your fight. If I can have any fight, I would do that fight. Yeah. And then uh, if we're doing, if we're talking about just regular matchups since he's retired. Charles Oliveira makes the most sense for me. He's on an eight fight win streak. I'm on a six fight win streak. Uh, after him, Michael Chandler. And then after that, Tony Ferguson. Those are those are my top three th uh, picks, and and in that order. Yeah. But I, just because that's what I want doesn't mean that's what's gonna happen. So I'm uh, I'm just waiting for the call and for them to tell me who I'm fighting. Well, it's not a sin to say, Lord, move me up the ladder. I'm here to serve you. Open these doors according to your will. You know, because um, the bigger the platform, the bigger the reach, obviously. I mean, Billy Graham's known around the world. You know, you've got these guys in different sports lanes. We've had some ambassadors for the faith in some ways, but you made an interesting point earlier. It seemed like it was more like, I'm going to use God to get to the top. And then once they got there, not to kick people when they're down, but it was more like, God, you have to have me win this fight because I'm praying. But if two guys are praying one of them is going to lose the fight still. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, one thing I, um, I, I've thought about too, you know, um, the apostle Paul says, uh, it is neither he who plants nor he who waters that matter, but God who gives the growth. Yep. It doesn't matter if I have millions of people following me or if I have one, it's God who gives the growth. Amen. It's God who, um, who, who, you know, basically provides the faith and, and uh, people are not attracted to me. They're going to be attracted to God. So mm. I'm not really big on the whole yeah. bigger platform thing. I, yeah. I need to get more people to listen. It's it's not my thing. I, God's going to set up a platform. Mm. It, whatever platform he wants me on, he'll set it up. Uh, wherever he wants me, he'll set it up. And then as far as praying just to win, man, maybe in the beginning I was like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think in my life um I'm, I'm a little bit old, older and and, and uh, i think my faith is a little bit deeper yeah mm -hmm. i i think um, i'm sure there's still much more room to grow in my faith but i understand i have ultimate victory Amen. i fight i fight from the victory you know i don't fight to the victory and and most importantly i fight for the audience of one there's only one person that i want to um I don't even know if impress is the right word, but I want to honor with my fighting. And, and, mm. and that's my. Mm. Amen. And yeah, because even in the past, the times you had losses and, you know, I'm sure you've got plenty of pastors, people around you, but we briefly had those conversations, man, how do you wrestle with this? And, you know, for me in my realm of professional skating, um, there was a lady that came here about three years ago. And she was doing a Netflix special with, you know, Tony Hawk, all these guys. And it was called Life After X. And the idea was you'd have these athletes who would live on these highs. And it was the life after the X Games. I was never an X Games guy. I was more the undercover street skater, you know, and the core kids follow what you're doing. But the point is, in skating, it's you with the victory or you with the defeat. It's just you. You got the trick or not. Yes, your team wins when you win. Yes, your team loses. But it's Benil who's in there fighting. And the point of that Netflix show was these athletes come down after their career or after a loss and it shakes them one minute you're driving, you know, this car and going into these sponsors and signing this and doing that. And the next week your snowboarding career falls apart. And so for you to have that grounding years ago, even when we talked about all that stuff, you had to deal with those losses then and grow. And even as Paul says, I learned to a base or a bound when there's increase, when there's not, when I get what I think I want, when I don't, 
how has that just shaped you as a Christian, you know? So I think going through the desert, when I had my losses, I had two years without a victory. I went loss, draw, loss, two years, lots of injuries. I couldn't even fight that much. Normally I fight three times in a year or less. And yeah. so that difficult time, it helped me get closer to the Lord. I And, and I understand some things you can't teach by words. Some things can only be learned by experience. And I believe it's called non-propositional information. It means this is something you can only learn through experience, through feeling. And I had to go through that. The, those, those trials, uh, they really cut the fat off of you. <laughs> and of your faith. I need a few that. more then. I'm 230 today. Yeah. Yeah, see, uh, but this is spiritually speaking. You, we, we carry a lot of excess things that we don't need. Mm. And recognizing that if I don't have my career, if, if I don't have uh, the popularity, if, uh, the, the fame or the whatever that comes with fighting, even if I don't have that, if I have the Lord, mm. I'm good. I'm golden. Mm. Uh, ultimately, nothing's changed. Mm. So learning that, I think was really useful. Uh, I, I, I think it was uh, invaluable. I, I, you can't put a price on it. It was, uh, it was incredible. And uh, that's what allows me to be on this run now. And that's what allows me to be a little bit more exciting than I used to be, because I can say, you know, I'm going to work as hard as I can. I'm going to do my best in these fights. Mm. And if things aren't going my way, that's fine. But at least I did my best. And that's what I think is, uh, is helping me be so successful. If the goal is not to win, the goal is to glorify my father in heaven. And Amen. to do that, I just need to show up and put in all the work <laughs> that I and remember that this isn't an idol. This is yeah. just something. And that really is the ultimate success. I don't mean just bringing him glory. We know that all things may buy him for him. But when I came to faith, looking at my skating as like, Lord, this is yours. You don't count your wins and your losses the same because like Romans 8, 28, we talk about, you know, when we're transformed into the image and conform like Christ, you know, how the all things were together for the good. When we hear that and we see that Paul was going through a hard season, but transformed. And here's a great example, as we mentioned already, you know, my professor Magno, he fought for many years. I think he was meant to fight Charles actually way back when they were in Brazil. I think he told me that story, but Magno Almeida, now he has a gym. He's been a professor for many years. I mean, the kids' class is thriving, you know, that the gym's full of people. And here's a man who's loving his wife, loving his three girls, and using his craft to provide. And he is a blessing, you know. Um, for those listening, obviously I'm pastoral, so I'm always trying to speak into people, encourage them. But for you as a professor in a gym, or for Master uh, Rafael, who's now teaching Mike Tyson well are you teaching Mike Tyson or is Mike Tyson is making sure you don't get hit by him but a coach a professor a sensei that's very pastoral in the gym so you know Lord I could go and just focus on my school love my wife raise my kids but I'll challenge you with this too because you're saying am I in my prime as a 41 year old man for me how old are you you're 31 31 I'll tell I you I what older. But uh, there you, you can't. You can't I, I seen your interview the other day talking about the black and the gray, but you can't see it right now. <laughs> good, he, good. Let's keep it that way. Well, the Bible says that's wisdom. So you're sounding like you got a lot of wisdom. Um, but no, the point is, is that I'll tell you when I hit 34, 35, I felt this kind of strength, like this man strength in my body that even though I didn't skate as much. I could jump over things like I never could before and the power I had. So I'm saying, yeah, I think there's guys at the peak, but I think even any of those guys you listed, you know, the Connors or the Michael Chandlers and that, I mean, all around your age, I think you've got a good five year run where your body is peaking. And that's when you kind of see these great things, you know? Yeah. Two things as far as, uh, as, far as an athlete goes, I would say two things you need to recognize your thirties, can be your best years these are the things that will get in the way though one is injuries mm -hmm. and two's motivation as you get older that motivation starts to disappear so you need to know what you're fighting for like i mm -hmm. said before um 
I, uh, I've been given these gifts. I, I want to multiply them and give them back. Uh, and that's a well that just does not dry up. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, the, the Lord is, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's overflowing. It, it even, it, it flows into my other wells. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's how I should put it. it. It really does. You know, just from this, I, I, I have, uh, I have mm -hmm. uh, passions to do even more outside of the gym and, and things like that. So I have that. And, and two, it, it's been uh, physical therapy and, and keeping healthy. Well, one of the things about getting older is you get these little injuries. And so mm -hmm. when you get these little injuries, they, these little ones, they start to turn into big injuries. You just say, ah, I'm old and uh, my body just can't keep up. But in reality, that's actually not true. Anybody's body is going to break down enough uh, wear and tear on it. Are you fixing yourself as you break yourself down? So mm -hmm. you, you got to look at it like that. Breaking down a little bit here, I need to rebuild that. Whatever you break down, you got to rebuild. I mean, mm. it's uh, the concept is really easy to think about, but we don't think about it in terms of body because we'll go train and we'll get done and we'll say, oh, that was great practice. I just need to rest a little bit now and I'll be fine. Mm. But you don't realize... I'll give you an example yeah. of this. You develop your big muscles so much that the little muscles that need to be active, they, uh, they, they become dormant because they mm. don't feel the need used. That's the thing about our body. It tries to be as efficient as it can. So the little muscles stop activating. Mm. And in a few, few weeks or maybe a couple of months, you're going to start getting injuries there. Because without the activation of those muscles, certain yeah. ligaments a certain way and injuries start to uh, pop up so doing these little exercises that keep those muscles active keeps those muscles strong and and keeps your ligaments yeah. strong it, it could let you tr compete for a way longer time mm. and, and so all that's left is do you have the motivation to be yeah. for, for so that that's that's those are the two things that I think that's really important. Uh, taking care of your body through physical therapy, massages, and whatever, all that yeah. stuff. And 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 the this is this is uh, I see <laughs> a lot of people that I I see a lot of people start to fail uh, when they get a little bit older is motivation. Yeah. Uh, sometimes younger guys, you, you see younger guys, they hit a wall or they come up to something they can't really overcome at this moment. And they say, Oh, well, that's it for me. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's, it's when I came to faith, I look, it was like the Lord changed my love for skating. I love it. It was six hours a day. It was all the time, but I was married at 19. You know, we were divorced at 22 and depressed, suicidal struggle for a year or so. You've had my testimony. Then came to faith at 24. My ex-wife came to faith. We were remarried. Me, my son's in the other room. He's 20, getting married, you know, in a month. Jesus restored. Guys, if you didn't know by now, me and Benil talking about all this stuff, but the whole goal is to really just, just drop the love of Christ and the gospel on all of you. <laughs> but my point was, and we'll jump into that. I know we'll end with these thoughts in a minute when we're done. But for me, it was like the drive for skating changed. And it was this drive to go and start sharing. And then even the jujitsu thing, my back used to be so bad from skating. And Magno would say, if you just keep showing up, you'll align your body because you're rolling, you're grappling, you're doing it. If I don't roll for two, two weeks, when I get on a plane or I sit down, I can feel any bad injury in my back. But like you said, all those little muscles that hold it up, they're strong. When I'm rolling with people last night, all the muscles, it might not be this mass, you know, big muscle, but the strength that's there, I feel better than I ever did. But at 27, I could have said, man. I folded this ankle. I bent this. I did that. And I don't, I mean, look at the Gracies, those guys, who was it? Carlos who was doing handstands on a, on a, the bonnet of like a VW and speedos or something. I mean, he's 80. So you're yeah. using your body. So yeah, I would look at you like you're prime. And I do want to say this, you know, I know a lot of people kind of went after Connor and he got those kicks and I'm sure he learned his lesson, but when you have a hundred million or something sitting in the bank, whatever he has, and you still come back, and he did catch Dustin clean. He might not have been popping as much. I don't know. But I believe he's motivated. You know, I know your motivations beyond all of that because it's on the Lord. But yeah, 30 something. If you're making millions now, you've got to have that drive. It's got to be there. I don't know about Connor, to be honest with you. Yeah. He, 
he um, he seems hollow to me in terms of competing and desire to compete. And I I, I don't know. I, I want to see more from him, to be honest with mm-hmm. you, because he's a great talent. He's got a great skill, but what's he going to do with it? And what's his next goal? And, yeah. you know, I follows him like whatever he tweets, whatever he does, he's, he's the guy. So, yeah. Uh, Cause it's headlines going to reach people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to see more from him to, uh, as an athlete because he's someone I might compete with in, uh, in the future. But uh, also as a Christian, I want him, you know, to be, to do well. I want him to, uh, you know, I, I want him to be healthy. I want him to take care of his kids. I want him to be uh, mm. a good father, a good husband. I want, I want all those things for him too, as well, as well. But, you know, I, I, there's no animosity or hate for him. So, you know, yeah. God bless him. I hope he does recognize that all the, all the motivations that he's looking for, the source is uh the source is jesus and uh <laughs> it's a well that never dries I, I hope i hope you recognize that one day well yeah i mean who hasn't even some of the guys in the gym who love connor you know i look at connor as connor has a very fencing style i don't know if you ever watched bruce lee when he spars in long beach his brother was one of the, the best fencers mm-hmm. you know <clears throat> bruce was raised in kowloon tong bruce lee as a kid and he had this stand back fencing style Connor has this wide, wide style, but I'm saying all the years of what he's gone through as a young man, you get the money, you get the suits, you get the watches, you get the cars. That's what sold the world, you know, and it's not wrong to enjoy these things, especially when people are in the world. But then I think some what he faced, you're getting into fights, in a fight with a guy in a bar, an old man, things that are coming up online. I think Connor faced his demons and like you, I'm just like, man, when you've got the whole well, but you're losing your soul, I just hope you know God and Jesus, not just, and you might not understand this coming from where you're from, Benil, but in England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, you know, which is where Connor's from, which is where I'm from, Great Britain, Liverpool for me, um, you have this idea of God, but it's on a personal relationship with Jesus. You know, you can be like, I thank God for my talents. I thank God for the money I've got. I thank God for whatever. That's how a lot of times the faith in those countries are. It's more are you Catholic or Protestant. But for Connor, um, that the Lord would save him, that the Lord would save us. That's the goal of all of this, you know, because um, I like a lot of the guys in the division, what they're doing. You know, they seem focused. But ultimately, I mean, we want to see God invade and take over. And some of these guys really go from sinners to saints like we were, you know, dead in our sin, still struggling. But Jesus Christ washed us in his blood. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's the ultimate goal. If, uh, you know, if, if God, uh, I always say, I don't know when I'm going to retire. It could be it could be tomorrow. If the Lord calls me to do something else, I I'm man, I hope I, I hope I'm strong enough to listen and not. <laughs> Because, you know, sometimes you, you won't listen and then he'll have to kind of be like, hey, you're not listening. Knocks you over the head a little bit. and then Put you in the like, belly of a whale. I, you know, exactly. I hear you. I hear you. Fine. <laughs> I, I hear you. Okay, I'll, 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 uh, I'll move on. So I always say when the Lord calls me out of MMA, I'll move out. And, and I think that's really important to not make idols of our sport and, and, and look look for it, for the fame, for, for all these things, because these mm. things – it'll um it'll suck your spirit out it, it'll drain you i spent uh you know before the fight i would do lots of hard training and by the end of the day i'd be kind of mentally just drained and and, mm. and dead the easiest thing to do when you're mentally drained is just go on your social media and uh it, it just you just zone out it's really yeah. easy you i'd either do that or I, I like to read comics or I would read comics and I recognize that about myself. And I said, after this fight, I'm going to put both of those down hmm. until I, I finish reading my Bible again. So I'm, I'm just going through my Bible right now. And the reason why I did that, is because I know after every fight, I get a million messages. I get a million hmm. and, 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 you know, I don't want to get lost in that i'd rather yeah. get lost in the word of god you Amen. know we can't, 
it's it's nice don't get me wrong all these people and all these messages and then right now all the best comics are coming out it's like the perfect time for, for that stuff but <laughs> you know, everybody's home so they're doing they're doing their best work uh you know uh, uh comic guys they do their best work at home and uh anyways i don't want to forget mm. what's important and and so i just put those things aside and mm. and and, and right now I'm, I'm i feel like i'm being the most fruitful i'm I, you know my wife's pregnant i, oh, I feel like i'm i'm doing a better job taking care of her needs than before the fight because even though i was training hard i felt like i had the time but it was a lot easier to just zone out it was a lot easier to just sit on the couch and be like i'm just gonna zone out i'm too tired i just want to zone out and <laughs> and i train the same way training hasn't really ch- changed much i'm still training hard but but it's a lot easier to be like no i want to mm-hmm. get up and do this or do that because this is the time to do it and, and and so i that's that's another thing i would i would tell a lot of people is what are you spending most of your time doing yeah and uh how uh how is that affecting you and, and where is that getting you sometimes you don't even know how it affects you so mm. i recommend if you're really big in social media or just on your phone just yeah think, maybe i will app on there and, and try to read once in a while yeah, just once you've listened to this podcast, put the social media down and, and get into the word. But no, Bruce Lee used to say, if you never aim at something, you won't hit it. As a skateboarder, I was focused on things. Then when it was doing Bible school, obviously now all that are traveling and preaching. And then even as jujitsu, I got into it like, Lord, I'm going to drive 20 minutes to the gym. That's time to sit and do nothing. That's time to listen to some worship. It's time to pray. It, and then the time on the mat is with people, but I never said I have to go be a black belt. I just got my purple, you know, like a few weeks ago. And that's Magno saying, all right, you're one of the heaviest, strongest dudes in the gym attacking everyone. I'm super passive, I'd say, because of my size. Um, but if I get to that place of a brown belt and a black lord, so be it. I do think, Benny, that we have that advantage because we know it doesn't matter. God isn't going to see me in heaven and go, man, you got your brown belt. You got your black Benny, you got that spinning back fist. Are you on a 10 fight win streak? He's going to say, well done, good and faithful. What? Not UFC champ, but servant. But that's the confidence. That's the confidence to say, and I see this even in Khabib with his Muslim faith. You know what I mean? Total different faith. That's not what we believe. But he looked at every fight as like whatever, you know, obviously he's looking to Allah. Obviously what God is open as the Christian, that's it. And and I've joked before, you know, especially in jujitsu, Costa Rica, different places have gone. I was in Costa Rica with a guy, Jen de Lima. I'd witnessed at a church, a guy from his gym had said, come speak in this gym tonight. He was a black belt there. We connected and he asked me to share a message. And the goal was, you know, what's the greatest submission? (laughs) The Gracies did many submissions back in the day. We just seen Adolfo Vieira get beat up in the UFC, you know, a man um, didn't like seeing that. But the greatest submission ever is that Jesus Christ defeated death, is that Jesus Christ submitted himself onto it to have victory. So I know people get red belts, but I can kind of picture Christ with, you know, with a white garment, with the gold belt that no one's going to come to, you know, we all must be, be born again. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, ultimate victory through submission, not Mm -hmm. by submission. Amen. Uh, It's a (laughs) really a really beautiful picture it's it's something as you know as a fighter as a as, as someone who's a little bit more savage it, it was really hard for me to understand until mm. i did uh, grace so yeah i i see what you're saying mm. and you know and i know we've took a lot of your time but you mentioned marriage so you've been a black belt in jujitsu for how many years now shoot 2012 so i'm, I'm coming uh, nine years nine years okay. i'm coming years so how many stripes do you have on your black belt now? You have, I have two, and I didn't even want those. But because you know, <laughs> black belt stripes just mean you're old. Every three years, you you get uh, one, and I'm gonna get my third one this year. Amen. Well, you know, obviously, we, my professor being a three stripe black belt, I did his wedding. So one of the things I said to him, I'll say to you, I said, okay, so now you're a black belt. But Benny, what what belt are you in marriage currently? Oh man, <laughs> marriage is a little bit tricky. So I, I, I would say I'm still a white belt. Yeah, but uh, I got some fundamentals though. So I, it's Amen. Fine. I got some good fundamentals. I'll be okay. 
you know how to um, put the toilet seat down, put your shoes away. You remember the holidays and then <laughs> little no. things. Yeah. You're good. I'll send you my marriage book. I'll get, I'll get your address or come down to the gym, but you know, it just seems like you're, you're, you're always encouraging. You're always pointing to the Lord for those who will listen and who might say, why didn't you guys go into a lot of stuff? Go back to the prior episode that we jumped into. We go into, you know, Benil's birth through growing up, coming to America. I think, was it a Del Taco obsession? Your mom was always getting Del Taco, which was, was my vice for a while. Then how you really came to faith, where you were in that journey. And we talked about some of the defeats as well. And, and you unpacked some great stuff. But today I just see it as you're in this amazing position. I believe what Dana was saying, you know, Benil should be saying this. I like to see stories unfold, but yes, whatever God does. People would say to me, why didn't you stay in this big realm of skating? And when is God going to save Bam or Tony Hawk? And I go, well, that's up to God. But every other person in the street, in the supermarket today, the people that might hear this podcast that might be so against MMA, I have no idea. It's saying, man, I'm going to pray for Benil. I'm going to pray for people in there. I'm going to pray for when he's in his gym. I mean, the other thing we haven't even talked about, and I know I don't want to take too much of your time, but you as a professor in the gym are sitting with people that are constantly suicidal. I mean, divorced and substance abuse, hating life. So that in itself, I mean, help people just understand what you're seeing now and how you use your faith with the platform you have. You know, 2020 was a really interesting year because, uh, because of, uh, the pandemic and I didn't realize what the gym was to a lot of people. We, when we opened back up, a lot of people came to us and were like, thank you so much for opening. We were just stuck at home, didn't know wow. what to do. And, you know, some guys don't want to go into the details, but, but uh, they were really struggling about uh, just being home and they didn't have anything. So for them, just to have a place to come train, it, it was huge. And then mm-hmm. for us to open, fortunately, Orange County is a little bit more lenient and they were, they worked with us really well. We were really grateful. And it just, I didn't realize how important it was, how in the lives of these people just to be able to come and train. Mm -hmm. And this allowed me to, again, go Mm -hmm. back in there and just, just minister to some people. And then others asked me some questions and things like that. I I didn't realize what a big door I had, what a big opportunity I had in the Mm -hmm. gym. And just this last year, I got to see more of that. And Mm -hmm. I'm realizing my gym is a ministry in a lot of ways it's a ministry you know we have bible study there obviously every mm. thursday not just that every day every interaction uh my gym is a ministry as a coach i'm a minister mm. i don't coach a lot but that's that's what it is yeah that's how you and guys i hope to anyone listening to this man um it's such a big deal i know those years of skating you're speaking to everyone people are listening oh here's coach here's professor we were made by God. We see this in Genesis to go out, have dominion and to walk in fellowship. And no many people are hurt today and they don't like to talk about love or they're bitter. Their families rejected them. Someone has this frustration, pain, hurt. You go hang out with people, you fellowship in church, you gather in a gym, you skateboard together, you do jujitsu. It's a religion and a family, but ultimately, um, like at our gym, you, you feel the word of God spoken and the Holy spirit's present. There's a lot of believers, but our heart is that as much as everyone can get victory on the mats or through life, the end of the day, we do all need that relationship with Jesus. So what would you just say to anyone listening going, wow, Benny kind of went a different route today. Yeah. They talked about fighting, but man, this guy's serious about his faith and, and we can feel where God's going to take you. You know what he might open up next. What would you say to someone that is the guy in the gym? That's just, or a fighter, or if someone like Connor said, I'm going to listen to Brian's podcast, which probably isn't going to happen. Hans Mollenkamp, send him this link. And what would you say to people listening about your Lord and Savior? I tell them, you know, you've, I'm sure everyone's felt some kind of love at some point in their life. And love is, love is what we think 
is the most important thing. If you think about it, you know, we get fame because we want to be loved. We get money because we hope the power will bring us love and everything we work for, we work so we can be loved and we can be uh, looked at with love or whatever. I'm telling you, you will never feel a love like the love of Jesus. You will never understand a love like that. It will radically change you. It will change you so much that you won't even recognize your old self. And, and, and you might like yourself right now, but I'm telling you, it'll be a version greater than any other version. So that was that's what I would tell them. The love of Jesus is so powerful. It'll mm. radically change you. And I promise you'll like the way you look. As uh, what, what is that commercial? What is the, the men's warehouse? What is it? Say? <laughs> you'll like the way you look. And it's <laughs> one of those. Well, Paul did say, wretched man that I am. So I'm sure when we look at ourselves, sometimes we're like, even the Bible says, don't judge the whale, judge yourself. So I know that there's wretchedness that's there. But what Benny's talking about is a walking, living relationship with Jesus. And for those listening, the way you come to that faith, even me mentioning Connor or me back then or whoever, and we can have an idea of God, a picture of God. But see, religion is climbing the mountain to get to God, which is what we see in the Old Testament. God calling Moses up the mountain or the people doing this or doing that. But relationship is when God came down the mountain in the form of his son, Jesus, because here is the bottom line, people. Benil has lied, lusted, hated, blasphemed. So have I. Everyone listening has done one thing that's opposed God. And so, well, why doesn't God do something about it? Why doesn't he change COVID? Why doesn't he change the world? Because God is focused on the eternal. So what he did was he sent his son, Jesus, wrapped in the flesh 2,000 years ago, hundreds of prophecies about that coming day, and he lived the perfect life. Originally, Benil, you're from, from what country again? Iran. So in Iran, in a lot of these, these Christian but Muslim nations as well, there's a sacrifice of a lot of animals as a shedding of blood to us. This seems more barbaric, but this is a picture of giving something of value in offering of a God. Well, what God did was he gave his very best, his only son, who went, Hebrew says, for the joy set before him. Jesus went to that cross. He lived a life for Benil, lived a life for Brian, lived a life for Connor and everyone. And he took all of our sin. He put it on that cross and he submitted himself to our sin, took it on himself, died. And he rose again to prove we can have eternal life. He's alive today. And all I did was I heard that message and said, wait, I'm a liar. I know I've hated God. I need forgiveness. God saved me in the room right here where my two kids are still sleeping, if you can believe that. He restored my marriage. My wife is in this room. It's going to be 21 years coming up in December. Ben Eel is talking about that living relationship where whatever happens, COVID, you get submitted in the gym. But all of that is through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That's why we're here. He died for our sin, calls us to repent. And it's this beautiful, gracious relationship where you now see your father in heaven loves you and you receive it and you're pronounced innocent or we die guilty. We need to repent and turn to Jesus Christ people. Amen. Amen. You know, last thing I'll, I'll, I'll say is uh, whenever you eat and you have a hamburger in front of you, think of it like this, an animal was sacrificed so you can have life temporarily. Mm. Jesus sacrificed so you can have life eternally. It's really that simple. Mm. We are spiritually, I'll use hungry, but in reality, dead. Mm. It is it is his blood that gives us life. Mm. And, and just that simple. You, <laughs> you 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 don't get you don't get to be full until you've tasted uh you've tasted that. Amen. Well, Benil, I know it's what, nine, almost ten. Are you training today or what's your plan? Yeah, I'll I'll jump in and train today, of course. Yeah, we did, we did Nogi, uh, a lot of takedowns and picking up my back's killing. And then we did some jujitsu afterwards. Everyone was mellow class, so I'm still good. But I'm going to hang with the family today, probably edit this later, get it up online. But just for those listening, how do they follow up with you, get a hold of you, reach out? Well, right now, not too much on social media, but uh, <laughs> if you can spell my name, you can follow all my uh, 
you can find all my media, yeah. <laughs> social. Media. I'm on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Those three. I don't have a TikTok or whatever you call it, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's what I'm on. And if you can spell my name, you'll find any of my social media. And uh, you know, eventually, I'll be back on. Amen. So yeah, guys, look at the title of these videos or wherever you're listening to this, Benil Dariush. And then just, you know, I know we'll connect sometime in the next few months. I might come and jump in one of those workouts with Ben Corson and, and see what's going on. But um, could you just pray us out, whatever the Lord leads on your heart, just for those listening? Sure. Lord, thank you. Thank you for such a great opportunity just to be able to speak about your goodness, your love, your grace. And uh, Lord, for whoever's listening, uh, whether they be new to Christianity or, or devout Christians or not Christian at all, Lord, what I would like them to, to just remember or to recognize is your, your grace and love. It's, it's not like anything we have in this world and everything mm-hmm. that even closely resembles it is, it's just the copy copied version of your love there's there's no love like yours and uh i pray everyone in this world i get the chance to see it and and to feel it and to accept it because it is the ultimate gift in this world so lord uh i i hope this podcast uh honors you and uh that that your love is recognized and uh, we thank you in jesus name Amen. amen And guys, if you do, just, just be praying for me, for the podcast, for those who listen, be praying for the Benil. And, you know, these guys are healthy, they're smart, and they get into these fights, and they're super close afterwards. It is like a family of people that are all on a journey. But be praying for Benil, his family, and the platform he has. Thank you guys for listening. And remember, 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, the message of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing, but to us... That's Benil, myself, you of a believer. It's the power of God. All of this sounds crazy. What is Benny talking about? What is Brian talking about? Well, we're talking about God, a relationship, Jesus, and then using skating and podcasts and MMA and whatever for his glory. Thanks for listening. Share, follow. Check me out at briansummer.net. Thanks, Benny. Love you, brother. Take care, my brother. Appreciate you.